Hey, what's up you guys? Josh here with the RC Recon channel. And I know, I'm know i not sure what time you're going to be watching this video, but it's morning for me, so good morning. That's why my voice is a little bit not normal. I just woke up. Anyways, we're going to be installing this sway bar kit. This is for the 2.0, but it's going to work just fine for our 3.0 here that we're working on. Part number 8398. And so let me go ahead and get this opened up. I'm going to have to read through the instructions. There's a lot of little parts and pieces and screws. So um, I'll read through the instruction. If you guys want to just follow along and do this install while watching this video, that will work perfect. So let me go ahead and get this opened up. I'll become familiar with the instructions and then we'll get started. All right. So just to quickly run through everything you get in the packaging, you get these um, I'll call them pivot balls, but they allow these pieces to rotate and the sway bar to slightly rotate on the arms. You've got your pack of screws and a couple grub screws in there. You have various sway bar links, so I'm assuming that they're different tensions. Then you've got two links for the front and two links for the rear and they are indicated with an F and an R and then you have more pivot balls these two for the front it doesn't matter which side and then on the rear you have rear right and rear left okay as far as the sway bars they are different based on stiffness the silver one is the smallest one 1.4 millimeter it's the softest it's these here then you have an intermediate one, which are these, slightly larger, and then the thickest ones are the stiffest, and those are the ones that we're going to be using, these really thick ones. Same thing for the rear. Now, if we drive it, and of course it's not handling like we think it should, it's cool that they include extra sway bars so that you can tune it as you go. All right, so we're gonna start with the front of the vehicle and we will begin by removing the two upper links right in here and then the two shock tower screws for the shocks. Okay, next we're going to be installing these front arm mounts onto the arms of the vehicle and that's going to use 2.5 by 6 screw one of these screws just slides through there and it's going to face the rear of the vehicle so let me get this one installed and then I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I feel it start to get tight that's when I let go but Hopefully you guys can see the ball is pointing towards the rear on this side. The front, again, they're symmetrical, so you can do the same. It doesn't matter which one goes on which side. Next, we're going to take one of these hollow balls and snap it onto one of the front links. So just like that. Then with this piece facing the front of the vehicle, snap it onto the pivot ball that's attached to the arm. So just like that, we'll do the same thing to the other side. All right. Next, we're going to grab our sway bar and set it into the groove right on this differential cover. We'll set it there and then we will insert the bar through the pivot ball, connect it to the arms on both sides. These are just going to rest in place for a moment. But we want to center that up and then use these screws to install them. So as soon as that grabs that bar, and you can see it move, that's where I stop screwing in. 
Now here you'll want to test the side to side movement, just kind of push on both sides. If it stays put, then you're in good shape. So if you tighten it down too far where the sway bar can't rotate freely, which we'll, we'll remove these for just a second just to test that. See how this is, it's tight up here, but it's rotating freely up and down, then you're good. And really what we should do is once these screws touch the bar, we should just back it off just slightly. From here, we're just going to install our little grub screw into the pivot ball up top. And depending on where you put it, whether it's all the way on the end like this or a little bit further up, that's going to help define the stiffness. If we look at our diagram here, you can see if it's further up on the bar, then you're making it firmer. And if it's closer to the edge of the bar, then it's softer. So whatever you want to do, you're going to want to try to match on both sides. But I'm going to go just a little bit firmer maybe not as far up as they have it, but somewhere in between these two settings, since we did go with the thicker sway bar. So this is being screwed into metal, so we're gonna put a little bit of Loctite on the end of this grub screw. Now for this, of course, that's a small grub screw. We don't want to over tighten it, but just enough to really grab that bar and we're gonna move it forward and back, we can see that it's not moving at all. And then same thing to the other side. All right, so I went and matched the spacing on both sides and the front looks good. So see now when this side lifts up, the other side lifts up as well. It's gonna really help with stability. All right, so let's get these links reinstalled and we'll reinstall the shocks. I don't know if you guys saw that, but I am reinstalling the shocks in the slightly higher up position. That's just to lower the front down just a tiny bit. All right, the front is finished. See, I, I lift this side up and you can see a little bit of lift on the other side. You can see it's, it's reacting just some. Now that's gonna make a huge difference when we have it on the front and the rear and when we go to do our speed runs. All right, now for the rear. All right, so the rear is gonna be largely the same. We're going to remove the two shock mount screws at the top. Same thing here. And then the top camber links. On mine, I have additional linkage in the back, so if you do as well, you'll have to remove that. Now you'll want to be careful here because we don't have steering links to keep everything in place. So the dog bone might fall out and all of this might rotate out of the way. I think it's just best to go ahead and let that rotate and take your dog bone off. From here, everything in the rear is going to be largely the same. So other than the fact that you have a rear right indication, We'll go ahead and pop that on and then a rear left indication. We'll screw both of those in with these. Then we'll grab these two pivot balls and pop them into the rear links. And pop the other end on just like this. We'll grab our sway bar and it sets in right up here. Now it looks like in order to get to those screws because this is a 3.0 we're gonna have to remove this body mount up here. So there's two screws on either side right under here that we'll remove and then finally one right through the top up here comes right off now we can secure our sway bar in place it's gonna go most of the way with the drill but I'll finish it off by hand all right so we can see that still moves 
So now we'll insert the sway bar into the pivot balls. And then just like the front, we will put some Loctite on our grub screws and then try to match on both sides. And before I put everything back, I'm just gonna make sure that the dog bone can fit back into place. All right, perfect, we've got good clearance there. Now let me do the other side. All right, perfect. So now we lift this side up and the other side wants to lift as well. Now we'll go ahead and start reinstalling everything. All right. So that completes the installation video for the sway bar kit. Other than the rear body post, this installation video will be good for 2.0 and 3.0 Vortec uh, chassis as of the recording of this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. If this helped you in any way, be sure to let me know by leaving a like. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment down below. I'll try to get to all of them. And if you wanna see more, videos like this or anything else I do on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. All right, until next time, you guys take care.